Hey everyone, Brian Dillon coming to you from San Diego Comic Con 2022 for Fanbase Press. We are once again interviewing some of the uh, the creative individuals that make this event so special. I'm here with Brent Trembath, and uh, Brent, you are a uh, I- independent comic creator that I've known for a few years now. Uh, first off, it's exciting to uh, be able to see you in person again <laughs> after a few years' absence. Yeah, right. So uh, good to see you. But um, I also want to make sure they get to talk to be- talk about Scruffy Puppies, uh, something that you've been working on for. A long time. What can you tell uh, viewers who might be hearing about it for the first time? Yeah. Uh, well, what exactly do you want to hear? A backstory or kind of what it's about? Yeah. What let's, so let's start off. Like, what is the premise of the story? Okay. Uh, long story short, it's a because uh, it's becoming more of an epic lately. <laughs> um, it's uh, about a, a pack of mutant orphan dogs who are protecting their adoptive father from a corporation who's targeted him for special abilities. Um, so it's kind of a um, when I did Scary Puppies, I initially was 13 years old. Sure. So I was really obviously into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which right, of right. course brought in the, the mutant animals. I also really loved Robotech, and I loved ElfQuest. Okay. And so I loved sure. the, the personal storytelling of ElfQuest. So I've been trying to bring in a personal story, character-driven thing within everything uh, as well. So um, it gets better as it goes along. You know, it's a little rough when you start trying to piece sure, it together sure. and stuff. Um, and uh, at first. I was doing like I, I went back to my original when I was 13. The stories I kind of took there are kind of what started off. I kind of the, okay. it anchored me to kind of do it. It's almost like a panel by panel of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one at first. You know <laughs> the first few pages, ode ode. You know sure yeah yeah. yeah a lot of love <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, but uh, since then uh, it has been you know work a full time job so it's been sporadic a, a little bit and stuff. But I am getting together. I've been relettering, uh, doing some touch ups. Um, some, uh, Nice little tight edits a little bit more, and um, relaunching uh, uh, coming up later this year. Um, so I plan on um, having it all available, and I'm moving. I mean, I'll have still stuff on this Comixology, but with Amazon doing all that stuff, I'm trying to get a more direct sure, to, sure. Uh, to readership going, and uh, just start really putting it out there. I, um, I have 17 issues done, which equates to about I've uh, uh, trade paperbacks that I'm putting together. The the, uh, the if individual. Sorry, I can't talk anymore. It's been a long weekend. <laughs> the individual uh, issues are going to be uh, online only, mm-hmm. digital, and then I will have uh, full trade paperbacks that will be print on demand that you can order through the website as well. Excellent. So something for, for uh, viewers to look forward to coming coming in the near future. Um, as you said that you've been working on this for a while, I didn't know it was as far back as when you were 13. That's, yeah. that's, quite, the, uh, that's quite the long creative journey. And um, as you uh, said, you know, and I, I completely relate to it, um, indie projects, especially indie comics, they move at different speeds, you mm-hmm. know? Because a lot of us creators, this is, uh, this is a labor of love. Yeah. Even if you're uh, fairly successful at it, it's usually not your only gig, you know? You have to have different sources of income to, to make everything work in, in the comic world. So uh, what advice would you get, give for other uh, self-publishers or people who want to get into self-publishing about, uh, you know, finding that balance and, and maintaining uh, a project over so many years? Wow, that's tough. Um, the reason, so I'll kind of roundabout answer sure. in different ways. I didn't work on it straight from 13. Right, I, uh, right, right. I started it again when I was uh, in 2002. I lost my job. I had to move in with my aunt and uncle. I had to like, start from scratch, and I was going to do it do it later on. And then I was like, well, I don't have anything else to do, so I might as well work on it now and start doing it. So I guess the first thing to do is just to, for independent creators, is just start doing it. Sure. Regardless yeah. of what it is. I think it's, it's just key importance to start. I, I know for myself, it's uh, once I get going, it's really good, but it's really hard to start. Mm-hmm. So when you start and stop and start and stop, it's kind of it breaks it up a lot, and it's tough to kind of do. Um, you're right about having to work jobs. Uh, I, w- I always told everyone in LA when I was living up there. I live in San Diego now, so it's kind of mm-hmm. nice. But uh, <laughs> um, I'm local down here. But uh, I always tell everyone I, I had two jobs that make money, one job that takes it, and <laughs> and that's what it was. I mean, this sure. is what. Uh, all that money was going into trying to publish and stuff, and it, publishing has changed a lot. So at the time, printing was still a big thing at the time when I first started coming right, out. Right, right. So I had a lot of back stock and, and things. And now yeah, I yeah. change it up completely, you know, digital and stuff. There's no reason to not be able to afford doing what you're doing because you have the, the means to be able to do, which is nice. Um, and I guess the last thing is 
Oh, man. Uh, it's just take advantage of your creative spurts when you have it. We all go through lulls and stuff. We're tired For and everything sure. and stuff. And sometimes people can work through those. I have tough trouble sometimes doing that. Uh, it's It can be an issue for me and stuff. So my whole thing is uh, when, when I do get a drive, whatever time it is, night, day, or whatever, and stuff like that, and I have the, you know, I have the space to do it, just dig into as much as you can at the time because you don't know how often you get those. And sometimes sure. you can ride those for a while, for several days or even a month or two. Mm-hmm. It just depends. So um, I don't know, it's been a roundabout. I know everyone keeps saying, like, draw every day, draw every day. I haven't been that person. I you know, work and do take care of a lot of things, and so my whole thing has been like, just keep doing it when you can, and don't just keep. If, it, when, if it's a baby step, it's still a step, so just keep stepping forward. I think those are really good uh, points, and I totally agree with you. I think I mean, it is important to 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 be consistent with drawing and, and writing and things like that, but I think it's completely uh, important as well to. Um, to know when you need to take a break, you know, and and then take advantage yeah. of the times when, as you say, you're at a creative high. Yeah, you know, that's that's really good advice. Yeah. Honor yourself. Definitely. Yeah. Um, well, we are returning to Comic Con after you know two years of uh, virtual events only. Um, I don't know that the pandemic is over. I mean, it mm-hmm. seems like we're still you know continuing to, to yeah. deal with the uh, the consequences of it. But what is it like to to be back to this event? Are you enjoying the return? Are there things you don't like? What's your experience been this weekend? Uh, overall, it's been pretty good. I I was able to attend the November kind of half con they did. Sure, the special edition. <laughs> yeah, and. I, I loved it. <laughs> I had to pinch myself. I thought I was like, I thought maybe I went back in time and I was a younger man again, but no, alas, it was uh, not, but it, <laughs> it felt really, I think, I think the big thing about the smaller cons that I liked or the, the, the special edition one is the accessibility to people, which is a lot tougher to do at a big convention. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, it's not, everyone's kind of behind more like lines or protected more. It's hard to reach people. It's a lot of people trying to get more attention by them. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's, it creates a bit of a divide. So I, I like the, uh, the accessibility of people at smaller cons. I mean, it was a little tiny con. I was hanging out, I was talking with Stan Sakai for a little bit, got pictures with him and stuff. Here it's like, <laughs> you know, he's hiding behind the booth. Yeah, right, kind right. of going on. Yeah, that stuff happens. So um, in that sense, I know. But I have to say from uh, not just my experience, but for a lot of other people, um, it's uh, been the healing and being able to reconnect with people. And that's sure. been obviously uh, lagging a lot. And so in that sense, it's, uh, it's invaluable. Excellent, excellent. Um, well, and it's been great to, to, to see you after so long, too. So, yeah. I mean, we, we ourselves are a prime example of what you're speaking yeah, of. Yeah, life changed a lot for you, man. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's, it's very true. It's very true. Well, life changes for everyone. I yeah. mean, you think it, it goes by the way in a flash, but you, you don't realize how different, you know, things can be in two to three years, if, if not even uh, shorter than that. Um, I find if you take any five-year period mm-hmm. and you go back, you're like a totally different situation than you were five years before. And, and sometimes it happens over gra- gradual, and then other times it, you know, like three, four years, and then the sudden quick change, and then it changes from then on out. But usually a five-year period that I've noticed, at least in my life, it's like, whoa, where, how did I, I was totally in a diff- different spot from before. Sure. Just, yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. Well, yeah, no, it, it is really interesting. I, and I think, I mean, maybe uh, maybe we're boring the hell out of the younger people <laughs> watching, but I think as you, as you age, uh, you notice that more and more, yeah. you know? Uh, well, I'd love to wrap up with uh, a question about uh, Fanbase Press's Stories Matter uh, initiative. This is basically one of the important things uh, for Fanbase Press is, is taking a look at stories in general about how they... Um, how they function within human culture. You know, we have used stories uh, for passing on traditions, for helping us understand and connect with others, um, to help you understand how to get through traumatic times, you know, trying times. Um, there's lots lots of ways that they play uh, a role in our culture, and I think sometimes we get lost in the entertainment or spectacle aspect of it. Um, given that we are essentially at a celebration of stories this weekend, uh, and we are all storytellers, you know, that, that kind of connect over that thing. Can you just tell us a little bit about what, what stories mean to you and, and how they are important in your own life? Ooh, well, that's a, that's a, wow, there's just a lot in that question. <laughs> there is, there is. <laughs> um, I mean, comics in particular using images is, is the oldest form of, um, of communication outside of uh, verbal, um, for written communication. So it's, it's a time-honored tradition to communicate and, and, and go forward and just express yourself. I think the self-expression aspect of that communication is 
very important and liberating for people to be able to share and communicate with each other. Um, regardless of what the, what the stories are telling and stuff, just the, the form of being able to do that. Uh, as far as um, the stories that, that it hit me and stuff, I, I think, man, it's tough. I go through so many different periods. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I think, wow. I, it's good, I always kind of go back to science fiction. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason being is science fiction is a good way of telling societal stories without hitting you over the head with it and being able to think of it because you're experiencing it through a different culture or some kind of thing that's a fantasy, sure. but it reflects what's happening now. I think sometimes, it's, even though I like realism and stuff and everything, I think a lot of people don't want to get hit over the head with things, like directly, directly, but still it's you need to inform people. So, and it, there's a mix there, and I think it's a balance to do. So I think it's important, I, that, I don't know, I think that kind of storytelling for me is very good where it's representative, so you're able to do it without slapping people in the face with it. Sure. But getting them, because when you do that, then they kind of retract. You want to they kind of get it, yeah, yeah, you mm -hmm. want to kind of get into that mindset, have them really question that, you know, in their own way, and figure it out themselves, and start kind of uh, getting the bridges, you know, like, oh, that's kind of similar to what's going on here, right, and then they start right. kind of, piecing together in their mindset of how that would work for them and really get to think. So I think that kind of storytelling uh, brings me forward, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, it's been great uh, catching up with you. Uh, if people are interested in uh, w uh, checking out Scruffy Puppies when it becomes available, what would be the best way for them to keep uh, track of you, essentially? Okay. I do have some issues on Comixology, um, so you can go ahead and go on there. Um, and then I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff on my site coming up in the next few, which especially by the end of the year. So uh, go to scruffypuppies.org and just keep checking back. As things go along, I'll, it'll be changing. The site will be changing. New material will be up. And I'm going to have some free stuff on there, too. Just enjoy the site a little bit in addition to trying to, you know, push, move the, <laughs> the yeah. story. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, definitely go and check out Scruffy Puppies. And, of yeah. course, if you are uh, looking for more interviews like this one, you can find them at fanbasepress.com. <laughs>